both connected and then I'll bring in the uh, two guests that are waiting there and then we can get started. Okay. We got Lisa Silverman and Jennifer Yurt that are just logging in. Hi there. Wait for me. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Jennifer. All right, I'm gonna bring in the uh, guests here and then now we can go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, so good morning all. Um, it's Wednesday, May 5th, 2021, and this is the virtual meeting of the uh, advisory park committee of the city of Birmingham. So uh, Laura, could you please uh, take a roll call? Yep. A reminder for everyone to state where they are currently located. Alvitus? Uh, Peter? Uh, Richard Ostring? I think Two Woods, Michigan. Aaron Black? Anna Honhart, Stephen Kozlinski, Lisa Kruger, Judith Pasquitz. I believe I saw her. Yeah, Judith, uh, you're muted. Here. Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Lisa Silverman. Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Mary Claire Petkoff. Here, um, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Jennifer Yurt. Here, Birmingham, Michigan. Okay. Um, so, uh, Commander Scott, do we have any introductions to me? Uh, no introductions today. Okay, great. How about a uh, review of the agenda? Do you have any uh, no, no changes from what was posted. And so uh, the first real uh, agenda item is the approval of the minutes of April 7th, uh, 2021. Does anybody have any changes, amendments, comments, or clarifications? Uh, hearing none, um, I would entertain a motion to accept uh, the minutes as presented in the packet for April 7th, 2021. Motion to approve. A motion by Richard. Second. Second by Judy. Um, Laura, could you please take a vote then? Yeah, um, Judy, I don't believe you were here, so generally right. people. Right, right, thank you. You're welcome. So we need a different second. Yes. Sorry? I'll second at Lisa Silverman. Lisa, Perfect. Please, thank you. Okay. Um, and if you were here, please say that you abstained uh, or weren't here. Please abstain. Uh, Richard Ostrain? Yes. Lisa Silverman? Yes. Alvitas? Yes. Mary Claire Peckoff? Yes. Jennifer Yurt? I abstain. I was not in attendance. Okay. And Judith Pasquitz? Abstain. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we have a couple of items here to deal with today. Uh, Commander Scott, it uh, looks like the, the first item is a credit card processing fees, which we started addressing last meeting. Could you please uh, update us on that? Actually, the first item on there is the parking structure internet upgrade. Oh, sorry, I was reading it wrong on my uh, on my, my sheet there. Yes, yeah, so the, the parking structure internet upgrade. That, uh, yes, go ahead, please. Okay. We did start that last time. Right. Yep, and uh, we do have Eric Brunk from IT here. As you remember at the last meeting, uh, the APC asked for it to come back with some additional quotes. So um, Eric has done that and has some more information for you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, yes, uh, as is in the report, um, I did come back with uh, two quotes. I got one uh, budgetary quote from Comcast. They couldn't give me a lot of specifics, but they gave me some general numbers. Um, and I went to um, clear rate who is your current provi internet provider and got a quote from them as well. Um, ClearRate does have a slightly lower fee, um, but I've been looking back through the quote that he gave me and it's not exactly the same as the one that we got from Crown Castle. Um, it looks like they're putting a hundred meg internet, a uh, hundred meg connection into each location that would in also include uh, City Hall. So at max, we'd have a 100 meg connection that would be split between all of the garages, whereas the Crown Castle was a 100 meg connection directly back to 
uh, city hall. So I would have a full 100 meg connection to each of the garages. Um, I believe that's the difference in prices. Um, so I'm here for any other questions that you might have. All right, I have a bunch of questions, so bear with me. Um, the first question has to do with the value of it, and it seems on the face, sure, you want good internet, but if we had outages six days, and assuming they were all day long, that's only 1.6% of the time. So the cost and lost revenue, if that's the reason that I'm wondering about the value, I realize you have other reasons like security cameras, et cetera, but given that the initial proposal had to do with problems with our internet, on that alone, I don't know if the cost is worth it. So I was wondering about that. The lost revenue is only one of many um, factors. Yeah. Um, the the system not being connected 100% of the time or 99.9, .9, which is what uh, Crown Castle is stating that they can give us. Um, does I mean, yeah, it causes some lost revenue, but that's not a, not, you're right, that's not a big case. Um, there's also the frustration um, and the fact that we're looking to do some upgrades um, to each of the uh, structures. And it's going to, each of the structures, the upgrades we want to put into each of the structures um, does require uh, faster, more reliable internet connection. So the cost factor or lost revenue is only one factor among many. And another question I have cost-wise is are, are considering it right now after, you know, over a year of no revenue for the garages, like in terms of the timing and the, um, you know, the, the cost effectiveness of doing it right now, it's kind of a general question for the group. Well, um, Scott and I had that discussion um, and just thought that it would be a good idea to start doing the maintenance work. One, because it is, while they do the switchover, we're gonna have a little bit of downtime in connection to the, each of the structures. Um, and that would be a good time to do it because we're not actually using the, the connection to each of the structures right now. Uh, I believe that the city is um, looking to start uh, charging in the structures again in July. So we'd like to have everything up and running on high-speed internet before that happens so that we don't cause any outages um, after we go live. And the current provider for the city is Crown and the current provider for the structures is clear rate? That is correct. Okay. Um, the city actually uses Crown Castle and Comcast. Uh, we were using Comcast for our primary connection until we brought Crown Castle in last year, about this time. Mm -hmm. um, Crown Castle has got a, a much higher speed connection. It's fiber. Mm -hmm. um, and we have not had any outages since bringing them on board. Um, I do keep the Comcast connection as a backup connection because it's always a good idea to have two routes out just in case uh, yeah. but we haven't had to switch back over to Comcast at all over the last year. Okay and then um, I guess my final question is um, a more general question. This the idea of fiber um, seems like something that we might want to talk with whatever vendor we use about taking more a more not global but citywide approach. I mean, why not start something that can be offered to the residents at some point? And in that case, is either of these vendors a better potential option? I know Clear Rate offers to residential. I don't know about um, Crown. Um, Crown Castle, I believe, deals more in businesses than to residential. Um, but one of the things that they do have is a wireless. Um, if we decided to go to be a smart city and, and uh, include wireless access points throughout the city, they are ready to, are ready to increase 
uh, the footprint by doing that. Um, and one of the things that they had discussed was the fact that if they were in the parking structures, it would be really easy to add a wireless access point from the structures that would handle um, wire city wireless in those areas. So I'm not sure that that's a route the city wants to go, but that does give us an option. Um, we also talked about uh, small cell tower possibilities as uh, a lot of the telecommunication companies are wanting to switch over to a 5G cell tower. Um, and they were, uh, Crown Castle is already in that market. So if it was something we decided to go forward with, um, they, they already have fiber throughout the, the city and have the ability to do that. Again, putting having them in the garages would give us a, a step up if we decided to go that route as well, um, because they would have a centralized point to work from. So, and Clear doesn't do that, is what you're saying. I don't know what Clear Rights okay uh, section of the market is for that. Um, I know that they do a lot of residential and they do business and it's direct uh, direct connections. Um, I know that they do do phone systems, but I don't know that they do. Uh, full telecommunications. I know ClearRight does full telecommunications and co-locations. Wait, ClearRight or Crown? Uh, uh, Crown Castle, sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. They're all so close, it's easy to get the name switched. I know. Thank you. That was exactly what I was wondering about. I think that'd be really cool to get citywide Wi-Fi. Thank you, pardon? I think it would be really cool to get citywide yeah. uh, Wi-Fi. We have a few locations now that that um, we have our public Wi-Fi in um, that some of the local residents can use from time to time. Because I've had residents call me and say, hey, my internet's out. I'm like, what internet? <laughs> because I have a cell, I have one of our wireless access points that goes down. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something a lot of cities were looking at. Um, I don't, I mean, I've been here for five years. It wasn't something that was discussed um, at the city level, but it is also, it is a possibility if we decide to move forward and, and add that as an offering, so. My internet's always been terrible and, you know, none of the providers can do anything better, but I don't know if that's true citywide, but certainly at South Bend Lincoln it is. Anyway. I had a question. So when they did the road construction and the uh, the possibility or the ability of cable or fiber was laid, is that throughout the city and who's that vendor? Um, we currently throughout the city, we have uh, Comcast has fiber throughout. Crown Castle has fiber throughout. Um, I'm not sure who else. I've, I've seen uh, 123 net throughout the city a lot. So it's, I'm, I'm, pretty sure that they have a lot of fiber throughout the city. Um, but yes, when the, the roads were reconstructed, uh, the city trying to be proactive did go through and put raceways um, in all of the new construction to allow for telecommunications to um, lease some of that space from us um, so that they didn't have to dig up work that we've already done in order to put it in place. So. I know that is part of uh, the city plan, anywhere that they're doing new road construction, especially through downtown, um, that they're looking at adding uh, that type of infrastructure to safeguard the work that they've done so it doesn't have to be redone somewhere else uh, at another time. So when you say throughout the city, you mean downtown? Downtown, yes. Yes, okay. it's, uh, all the downtown work is where, where they've did that. Um, figuring that there was going to be a lot of telecommunications wanting to come into our downtown area. Um, and uh, that we didn't wanna to have to redo roads, redo sidewalks uh, because they came in and dug things up in order to uh, lay fiber, so. And, and just one more clarification, just um, you said that it's 100 meg from each structure to the city hall and clear rate is strictly 100 meg total that is from the proposal that i got from clear eight that is what i'm seeing um they have 
a hundred meg connection at each building, including city hall, um, which isn't what I really asked them for, but that's that's the proposal they put forward. Um, I was trying to get us an apples to apples um, so that they, they gave me a quote for um, a hundred meg connection from each location uh, with an endpoint here at city hall. So, and I know that's what Comcast gave me. That's what they gave me as far as um, the budgetary quote that they had was a uh, hundred meg connection from each structure back into city hall. And that's what uh, Crown Castle gave me for their quote. Okay. And, and have you had any disruptions with Crown Castle at city hall? I have not had any, con any problems with Crown Castle at city hall. Um, they've actually been here for a couple of years because the police department did a major upgrade to their infrastructure with the E911 that came in from Oakland County. Um, and they haven't had any outages from the fiber and it, that's been here for two and a half years, maybe a little longer. Okay. Thank you. Else have any questions for, uh... I just have one quick question. Um, I noticed that the clear rate um, charges an install fee. I was wondering, um, I didn't see that for Crown Castle or for Comcast. I was just wondering if there was there, an there isn't an install an install fee for Crown Castle. Um, it's actually the fees are built into their um, monthly charge, which is another reason why their charge is a little higher than uh, clear rates, but of course you saw the install fee for clear rate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you do take that install fee and you break it out over the 36 months, it does increase that monthly fee, but it doesn't bring it up to uh, Crown Castle's monthly fee. But like I said, there is a difference between how Crown Castle's was structured and clear rates is structured as far as um, how everything's connected. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the committee? Uh, Scott, do we have any public uh, to add comment here or no? I do not see any public log here. Um, anybody else in the committee then? Uh, so do we have a, uh, a motion here, Scott? Or do we, what, what do we do with it? Yes, we would need a motion uh, to choose a vendor recommend a vendor to the city commission. Okay. And I will obtain uh, a motion. I think there's something written at the bottom of uh, this memo. So, yeah, so a motion if you want to present that. I'll make a motion for Crown Castle as proposed. The question is, are we voting on the 36 or the 60 month at this time? Good question. Not. I'm going to defer that to Eric. I don't know if there's any benefit to do the longer term if it's a reduced rate or there is a like there, there is a little bit of a reduced rate for the 60 month. Um, it depends on how long you want to put a uh, how long you want to lock in a vendor on this. If you want to do it three years and continue from there. That's probably your easiest bet, um, but it's up to you either whether you want to do three years or five years. There is there is a cost savings between the three year and five year. I believe it's a little over four. It's four hundred dollars a, a month. Uh, roughly that, yeah, about four fifty a month if you go with the five year term. That's. Uh, okay. That's sixteen thousand dollars, but on the other hand, over three years. But on the other hand, since it is brand new to us, maybe it's worth just starting with a far shorter one. Then I'll make the motion to go for the thirty-six month. I second the motion. I Jennifer seconded, and Richard did the first motion. Uh, Laura, could you take a roll call vote, please? Yes, before I call the roll, um, I noticed that Aaron Black joined us. Aaron, are you in Birmingham? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Um, and I will be calling you for this vote. So, Richard Astrain? Yes. Jennifer Yurt? 
Jennifer is on mute. Yes, thank okay. you. You're welcome. Aaron Black. Yes. Judith Pasquitz. Yes. Lisa Silverman. Yes. Alvitus. Yes. Mary Claire Parkoff. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, Thirty-six months with uh, Clown Castle. Uh, thank you very, very much for that presentation. It was very informative. Thank you for your time. And thank you for doing all the research too. Excellent. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, Scott, uh, so the next one is in the uh, credit card processing piece, right? Yes, at the uh, last meeting, the APC had some questions regarding the credit card processing fees, and Commander Albrecht gave some <clears throat> initial information on that. Um, he did go back and pull a lot of the reports that were done when the processing fee for the on-street meters first started. Um, those were attached to your agenda, and he is online here to kind of review that and answer any questions for you. Mike, are you there? He's mute. Muted. I see him there, but yeah, right. I'm in. I was having a little trouble unmuting myself. Sorry about that. Uh, I uh, attached the original uh, memorandum for the meter credit card uh, services. Uh, what happened is our vendor ended up getting an API, which is a gateway through Civic Smart, because uh, initially that would be an additional seven cents uh, per transaction charge for us. Uh, so they partnered with uh, Civic Smart, implemented their own gateway, and passed that savings on to us as well. Uh, as you look at our current statement, when I, which I attached to the agenda, the average cost for this month was about $0.26 cents per transaction. That will fluctuate depending on the amount of time purchased. Uh, if they are purchasing uh, in longer durations, uh, that reduces the, our average cost. Uh, going through these when we first started, you'd see an average of probably 32 to 34 cents per transaction because people were purchasing uh, smaller time amounts. They were just purchasing the initial hour. Uh, if you look at this statement, the average purchase of time is about an hour and 45 minutes. So. And with the 17,000 uh, transactions that we did last month, uh, that puts our average cost at 26 cents per transaction for the credit cards. Any questions for me? Yeah, yeah, I, I still have a hard time following. So on total revenue, you, you broke out, was it 697,000? And then the fees were, 11,000 something. I'm, ju I'm just trying to get to a net uh, percentage of what the transaction is on each. Is it, I'm trying to figure out, is it, is it 10%? <laughs> uh, which one are you referring to, sir? Well, I was looking at, there was a total, let me just, on what page? It just seemed that the the overall. I'm I'm trying to get to the overall percentage exactly. Um, I know you you've broken it down to twenty six cents or something, but I, I'm I'm trying to get on the total revenue exactly what the net we pay. <laughs> Is there a way to break that down? I, I'm just trying to get to what the actual. The net it, 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 that, that's why I included a statement. It, uh, what happens is when Heartland offered us this, they get a special discounted rate uh, for each kind of credit card that, that is being used, uh, and they discount that savings to us. If you look at it, the, the savings amount that they they qualified was uh, if you add up the daily discounts is about. Four thousand three hundred and thirty-four dollars that they passed on to us. It it says on the statement that the total deposit is forty thousand three hundred seventy-five twenty-five for that month, yep. and the yep. fee forty-five thirty-two sixty-seven. 
Yes. About 1.49 percent, which seems a little high to me, but uh, it would be higher. I don't think that it wouldn't be 1.49 on well, 30. I was just dividing the 45.32 by the 30,000, if that's really the total. But they are as non-transparent as every credit card merchant processing company I've ever worked with. Um, I was confused about, they do the same thing that mine does with the different kinds of credit cards, but it looks like the contract, the original contract doesn't break it down that way. So, no, our, our, new, our initial contract was just for estimates. Uh, that was based on like 500,000 uh, transactions per year. Uh, the closest that we came to that is in 2019, we had uh, a little over 300,000 credit card transactions. Yeah. Um, my experience, of, which is obviously on a tiny, tiny scale compared to this, um, well, not tiny, tiny, actually, but much smaller, is um, that you have to really uh, look every couple years, every two, three years, probably right about now, um, because I don't know if the rates creep up or the rates get better with other, you know, competitors, but we, we certainly could potentially do better with a competitor. There are a lot of companies out there. Yeah, Lisa, can, can I just, if you go back to your uh, statement on 29, and I know it's just a fictitious statement, it says total deposits, 30,375. Would, would that be total revenue you're taking? And then the total fees yes. would be 4,000. Well, that that's over 12%. I mean, I, that, I agree that that's just an outrageous. 14.9%, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I, I said you, it, it wasn't 1.4, okay. yeah. I, as a merchant, I pay a, a flat fee, you know, no other pass-ons, you know, yeah. uh, uh, 2.4%, uh, 2.4. Yeah, so, ours average is 2.2, and that's with American Express included. It, it, that's right. That, yeah. That's why I to get. That's why I asked for this last uh, meeting. It just seems like pretty absorbent in fees. But if that's what everybody else is paying, I, I just I can't imagine that kind of fees that we're <coughs> enduring. Um, uh, just to interject real quickly, um, I think it's important that you remember that credit card fees on very small amounts are typically much higher. Wow, it doesn't have to be. It's a negotiable item. I mean, it's I, it, I agree. I just wanted to. I just wanted to throw that into the conversation. Yeah, it, it, and I agree that it, on small amounts, but you know, but they're making a lot of money on us, so presumably they, we could find and, and the trend is that more and more people will be using Park Mobile. So, right. I'm just concerned, you know, again, is, is that the most competitive or are there, is it anything negotiable? But, you know, 14%. I, I, I think I think once uh, the structures get up and running, you could probably find a common vendor between them and and the on-street meters because they're, you're both, uh, both entities are purchasing small amounts of time uh, per transaction. Uh, so that might be something more... Uh, for the new director of the parking system to look into this, find a compatible system that can use uh, Civic Smart and whatever is decided in the okay. parking structures. Yeah, another example, it says fees which are, it doesn't have a page number, I apologize, but fees which are generally negotiable and vary by credit card processor include, and like bad chatter fees, PCI annual fees, I've negotiated those out of, and again, they don't make that much money on me. I would think we could negotiate those out. They also say that non-negotiable fees include interchange rates, et cetera. Again, I negotiate those, so I would think the city could too. Maybe I'm wrong, but. Yeah. It's definitely worth looking into, so. Yeah. Another question I had relating to the city end of it is, if we're charging 
uh, fees for credit cards. Well, I was thinking that was a lot. Now I'm thinking maybe it's not considering what we're paying, but I would think we would be paying less than that. So. And Hi, this is Jennifer. I'm sorry, I do apologize. I have to drop off at this point for another um, meeting I have. So I have a great day, everyone. Sorry about leaving early. I also wondered uh, the expectation of a consistent 19% increase in revenue. Did we get that over 2018 and 2019? Anyone knows? Mike, do you have the answer for that? I'm not sure where Mike went. Okay. He probably did. From the increase in revenue, I would say yes. <laughs> My last comment is I found it surprising that the professional liability insurance limit was the same as mine again at my two person office um but maybe that's how maybe that's the norm of some sort i uh, sorry about that i was having trouble with my computer uh back in 2017 we did about uh 150,000 transactions 2018 it jumped up to almost 300,000 uh, in 2019, we were just over 300,000. That was with all the construction uh, also to be considered in the downtown. Uh, then it drops off for 2020 and 2021, essentially because of COVID. I do think there's some valid points, you know, taken away from this and um, to what Commander Albrecht said is, you know, once we get a new parking director, um, as well as any new operating systems at the parking structure, this is probably something that needs to be reevaluated as it's a few years old and definitely can be renegotiated. I think also to keep in mind is when the city uh, enters into these type of contracts, it typically goes through the RFP bidding process. So, uh, which this would have been the low bid at the time um, to do these processing fees for us. So. While some of it is negotiable, I mean, some of it is a result of uh, what bids we receive and what companies are willing to work with the city as well, too. So, but I, I do agree with uh, what the board's kind of recommending here is that this needs to be revisited here in the future. And, and just another point, uh, have we looked into the contactless uh, payment and the structures if we're going to, if Crown Castle's rewiring everything and uh, the new internet service, or is that, uh, going to be new software for all the structures so that that's coming um as you all may um, remember when tiffany was here she had put together an rfp to upgrade those operating systems at the structures uh with her departure we pulled that until further review can be done um i would expect that later this year probably going into fall winter um is when we'll start evaluating uh, those systems that are out there and what uh, type of route we want to go. Um, I think there's a lot of different options out there. I think there's a lot of better uh, contactless uh, options out there like you're referencing. Um, and But that'll be something that'll probably come to this board in the, in the fall, uh, hopefully fall period. And I think a lot of that too is going to partially depend on uh, the new director of parking and, and when that goes. Is, uh, last, this past weekend was the budget meetings with the uh, city commission. Um, they did review the parking budget, which did include the uh, budget amount for the parking director and an assistant to work with the parking director. Um, the final budget will be approved at the next commission meeting. And then once that's all done and approved, HR will be posting that position. So um, as far as the time frame to fill it, I mean, who knows, best guess, but I'm guessing maybe six months. Um, but uh, I would expect that project to kind of get started before then. Um, at least to have that information there before that parking director takes place. Thank you. I'm not from the committee on this topic. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you there. Any other comments from the committee on this topic? No. Go ahead, Judy. No? No, no. no comments. 
So Scott, where, where do we want to go with this now? There's a there's a, a resolution, but we're talking about reevaluating. What, what what do you think we should do? I, at this point, I think this is just an informational topic. It was uh, you know requested by the APC to to go over what we're currently paying and what the processing fees are currently. Um, however, I think based on the conversation, there is definitely a uh, desire to reevaluate this in the future. So. Uh, right. Why this is not an actual item, um, it's definitely something that we're going to keep in mind for future topics. And I think that'll be something when we look to upgrade the parking structures and bring out a parking director that this is a topic for the future to reevaluate these fees. Is, is there a way to get any uh, information from, you know, neighboring cities such as Royal Oak and Ferndale because they all have Park Mobile? Just, just as a comparable, if we're all paying those high fees and there's nothing we could do, but I, I just can't believe for that kind of percentage. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, we, we talked to them quite a bit about what they're doing, what they're charging for parking. And we definitely talked to them about what they're, uh, you know, who they're working with and what kind of processing fees they're paying. And correct me if I'm wrong, Commander Albert, but I think the document we just went over was the actual meter fees, not Park Mobile. That Correct. is somewhat separate. So that was the yep. smart meters themselves. If you were to actually use your credit card within the meter, those are the fees. Park Mobile has... Uh, a different system set up. Park, Park Mobile charges 43 cents per transaction to give you a price comparison. Wow. Uh, on your side. Uh, but you get the the user fees for them as well. So versus versus a credit card transaction. Again, the smaller, uh, when we put out the initial RFP, uh, pretty much put everybody was in the same area as far as price if you go through and look at the rf uh the report uh it's just a number of small transactions that are being made uh makes it very costly to to process them and i do believe uh when when we were working with uh park mobile I mean, that's a standard fee they use, you know, across the board, no matter what city or jurisdiction they're working in. Um, I do know uh, Commander Albrecht and Ellen DeVue, when we were first signing out with Park Mobile, uh, beat them up pretty good. And I think we are paying less than most other jurisdictions are for that use. But with that being said, like I said, this not an actual item today, but I do definitely think, you know, going forward, we'll look to reevaluate the credit card processing in the future. I think that, that's the way it should go. Uh, Scott, are there any public uh, comments on this? Again, I don't I don't see any public login, so I think we're okay there. Okay. Does the uh, committee have any other comments? Thank you, committee, for your uh, for your thoughts. I think uh, evaluating the cost here. Um, I guess we can proceed on to uh, the next agenda item, which is uh, open for uh, item Scott. Have there points to bring up? Or you think we to talk about? Yeah, is, is it possible? I mean, since the last couple of commission meetings, there's been some concern and questions about if you're not in the uh, parking zone, you know, especially with what's just happened with the Pearl and the uh, Daxton Hotel. What do we have any road ahead that it, for future uh, requests to be admitted into the parking system and what that rate is and what the rate was paid before uh, the merchants that were, you know, initially assessed to get into the parking system. I mean, this is something that seems to be going to be coming up quite frequently now with some of the larger projects. Uh, and I also saw with the RH proposal, uh, you know, they are in the parking system, but the, the density of some of the buildings and, you know, buy into the system or they don't need to get into the system. I think we have to have some clarification on all the rules. So uh, great timing. Thanks for bringing that up. Actually, there is a special meeting ahead of this Monday's commission meeting uh, that will start at six o'clock and it is everything parking assessment district related. Um, we started a project probably two months ago 
uh, doing a deep dive into the parking assessment district, when it started, how it started, why it started, uh, where the fees were assessed, assessed and um, is there a process in place to expand that district or not, or should there be different districts or whatnot? So um, actually at six o'clock this coming Monday before the commission meeting is a special meeting about that topic itself, so. Well, it's interesting. Wouldn't some of those topics come under the jurisdiction of the advisory parking? I mean, I mean, it's. I think it's a kind of ironic that uh, next Monday is a meeting on this, and we've had no discussion on this. <laughs> yeah. So the city commission asked for information on it, and the city manager gave it directly to the city attorney to provide a report to the city commission. So. Um, this isn't really something I've even worked on. Um, I've provided some information that I was able to dig up through old files to uh, Mary Kacharik, the city attorney, to review that. I know she's been working with the planning department and building department, finding some old files. So um, it's it's really not even something that I've been involved in very much other than maybe giving them some parking counts. Uh, so it has been a city attorney project and uh, going right back to the city commission. And I think it was a result of, like you said, with the Pearl, um, when that request went through this board, uh, that request was denied. I, I, the city commission agreed with the APC, um, but then looked to the city attorney to provide some legal counsel as to um, what are the rules of the, you know, the parking assessment district? What can they do or can't they do with that district? So um, it really, I think, was designed more as a legal review, which is kind of why it was handled by the city attorney and not the police department. Um, so, and yeah, I, I mean, we just, we had a discussion yesterday, uh, with the city attorney who kind of reviewed her findings in preparation for the meeting on Monday. Will we be able to participate in that? Uh, yeah, I believe it should be a public meeting like any other. Um, I believe it's posted on the city website. I haven't gone there to look, but, uh, I believe it is. So, Al, it would be best interest to, to join in. Yeah, I, I think uh, we, 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 should, uh, we should listen in on that. Okay. It's like noting that it would start at 6 p.m. and it, it starts before the meeting, so. Wait, you're saying it would be before 6? No, 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 sorry. The, the commission meeting start at 7.30 in general. This starts at 6 p.m. The workshop starts at 6 p.m. It seems like it's really important that this committee be well versed in those issues around the district, parking district. So I agree. It's and um, it seems that maybe that participation um, of Alan Richard could be, in a sense, formalized. That they're not just attending as you know citizens but attending as part of the structure of looking at the issues that surround uh, the parking district. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, first of all, I, I totally agree. This board will be um, very instrumental in making any recommended changes to how that runs. Um, I don't believe that's the intention of this meeting. I think it's simply a legal review of uh, what it means to have a parking assessment district, what are your legal capabilities, what you know, what can you and can't you do, and when when was it formed and why and how it developed to what it is now. Um, I, I don't foresee any decisions made by the commission as far as how to change it or if they're going to change it. Um, I think that would come in the future and would, in my opinion, obviously come to this board first for the recommendation. Yeah, my, my only concern is, you know, that we have some of this information you know, I've been a merchant for 47 years, and I can tell you that I've been assessed for every single one of the structures that have gone up. So I'm trying to recall, I believe there was one where we let someone into the district that was outside the district or on the borderline, and, and what did we charge them? Was there an example of that, Al, or? Yeah. That, that sounds familiar. I, I, I don't recall when or where that happened. So in, my, in my knowledge and looking over the parking assessment district, no no business that was outside the district was ever allowed into the district. What had happened was there was buildings within the district that uses had changed and then were assessed because they were part of the district. For instance, the old post office, because it was a government building, was never assessed. 
Um, and once it became a private building, it was assessed. Uh, the same is true about the old school board office. Um, the other addition was, um, was I think it's uh, the, by the ravines there, just north of the uh, North of Woodward Park construction. Yeah. When those right. were when those were private right. properties, um, residential properties, they were not assessed. And now that it's commercial property because it's within the district, it was assessed. And do we know at what rate they were assessed? I don't have that in front of me. No, I, I would have to get with the finance department to find out how that was all calculated and what the actual rate was. I think we did have it or did review it when we were looking at the furrow to see what the difference was. Okay. So I do remember seeing it at one point, but I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. Right. Because I remember we, we were questioning, you know, for the pearl to get into the uh, district, it was, it was like a extremely low price and it was, it just didn't make sense. So if we have any formulas, that would be helpful. Correct. And, and the, the formula that was used was the same formula that would have been used you know, 50 years ago. And I think that's part of the reason that the commission wanted to look at it again, much like the APC said, this amount of money is ridiculous to forego all zoning requirements and be part of the assessment district. So um, that's why they've asked for the legal review to kind of look at it and say, you know, does there need to be a new calculation or does this need to be closed and have a new assessment district for new areas that want to do for future developments or whether or not you can allow some so it's this whole legal discussion as far as can you allow somebody in, can you not, you know, and um, like, again, like I said, I don't believe there's going to be any decisions made there as far as how to go forward. It's just kind of understanding what we have and what we can do with what we have. Okay. Appreciate it. Yep. Richard, my office hours go until six on, on Monday, so I, I may be a little tardy. Okay. I will definitely be there. <laughs> Thank you so much, the two of you, for doing that because it seems like we have to be well versed in this legal background to it, and it's complex still. It's it, it uh, so it should be reviewed. Yeah, we didn't try to attend. I'm not sure I can. It's That's so it's my, that there's some talk about the triangle just trying to uh, promote a garage being built there, and from my understanding. Some of the funds would be, you know, possible from from the, uh, you know, the assessment district. So I, I, I think we really need to be pretty well educated on what's happening here. I agree. So with, with that being said, just a couple other uh, informational things I wanted to let the APC make sure you're aware of. Um, number one is the parking permits. I, I know we've talked about it before, the process that we're going through as far as um, trying to renew that list and update that list and issue whatever available permits we have. Um, Sarah's been working diligently on that. I just talked to her the other day. Um, they've gotten through most of the wait list. Uh, we do have available parking passes still. and. She's con continuing to work through that wait list with expected to be done sometime, hopefully early June, mid June. Um, as far as having anybody on the wait list that wants a pass, will have a pass, assuming passes are still available. The goal is, is that come July 1st, when we reinstitute payments, that we'll have no available passes or nobody left on the wait list, one of the two. Um, so that, that process is unfortunately very time consuming. And as we try to reach out to people and you know, we don't want to just contact them once and then delete them off the list. So we're given opportunities to call back and try and uh, contact not only by phone, but also by email um, to give them a fair chance to obtain a permit if they want one. So uh, I know she's been working quite a bit on that over the last couple of months and is hammering it out here in the next month or so to try to make sure we finalize that before July 1st, just so you're all up to date on, on that. I think right now we stand at about a thousand, maybe less on the wait list. Sarah, is that right? Sound about right? Yeah, I would say like for the uh, individuals, a little over a thousand will be at close to. And I think when we started this process, we were at about like 3,600. That wow. sounds right. Yes. So there's, she's, she's been working pretty hard on that. Obviously that's a lot of phone calls, a lot of contacts, um, as well as, uh, you know, any other current pass holders that gave up passes that they've been dealing with. So um, it's been a lot of work. So thank you to Sarah and her staff for, for doing that. Um, the other thing I wanted to make you aware of is I did hey, talk. Yeah, hey, could you tell me what the permit situation is for parking lot six? 
lot six. Let me take a peek. Give me one Actually, you know what? I had it printed off right here somewhere. So lot six uh, shows we currently have five permits available that are the $210 a month permits. That's best for quarter. I'm sorry? That, that, that's per quarter, I believe. It's billed quarterly. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, so, but there's five of those permits currently available is what I'm showing on our on our list. Now, this was as of uh, March, so there may have been some slight changes in that, why she's continuing to work on this, but um, there All were right. five available at, at the end of March. Thank you. Yep. I have a question. Since we were planning on opening everything up July 1st, have we contacted the five largest users of the parking structures, such as McCann Erickson, Balfour, just to see if... Uh, their thoughts are that they're bringing their employees back July 1st or September or what, what the process is. Because I just, I just want to make sure that um, if most of these people aren't going to be meeting in person, I mean, is it, are we a, a definite uh, goal for July 1st to start the fees again? Yeah, so fee, fees are going to start July 1st. Um, that was a decision made by, I believe, it was the first year at the APC and then filed at the City Commission. Um, that we were going to start fees July 1st. Um, with that, notice has gone out to uh, everybody. I know SP Plus has been sending out notifications to all permit holders as well as posting signs in the structures so anybody using the system would see that and be given notice. Um, there has not been any direct contact with businesses as far as I'm aware of to say, hey, are you guys coming back? Are you going to use these passes you're saying you're having? Uh, we're just letting them know that we're going to start billing them for those passes come July 1st. So I do expect there is the possibility that come July 1st, we may see additional passes given up uh, when, when they have to make that hard decision, whether to pay that bill or actually use the pass or hold on to it. There's definitely that possibility. I, I think it would it'd be helpful to us to understand that if, you know, someone like McCann Erickson, who has, you know, a tremendous amount of passes, I mean, are, are they in the process of, you know, calling their employees back full time or into the city? Or I, th I think it would just help us in what direction we're going. I mean, if, if, at least for the top five, just a simple phone call to those companies. You know, are you planning to come back in uh, September or July? Or Yeah, I mean, we haven't done that. Like I said, it's just been a notification that you're going to have to start paying for those passes. I would assume if they're going to pay for the passes, it's because they intend on coming back, unless they're just paying for them to hold on to them in case they intend to come back. Um, That's you know, who knows? So. The other thing I wanted to bring up was uh, I did have a conversation with WJE, that's the engineer doing the structural assessment on the reports last week. Um, they have sent me three reports. Um, I'm expecting the other two, hopefully this week. Uh, once I get all five and get a chance to review those five, I, I'm planning on setting up an appointment with WJE to review those um, to kind of plan out a course of action here. So I wanted to let you know that probably next meeting we're going to see some report uh, coming to you as far as recommendations on on where to start on that. It's from the three I have now, it's it's fairly extensive, the amount of work uh, they're looking at from the three structures. And um, we're, we're going to be spending some money over the next few years. They What they did is they broke it down for us and most immediate recommendations that need to be done within the first two years and then more of a long term over the course of five years on what else needs to be done. So uh, once we have all five reports and are able to have that meeting with WJE, we'll then come to this committee with those recommendations on how to move forward. Just wanted to make you aware of those two things and where they stand. So, thank you. That's all I got. That's all you got. Anybody have anything else? Yeah. One. One last point. Uh, it's been brought to my attention. You know, pretty much through observation that on street parking, I've seen quite a few cars have multiple tickets. Are we going to be towing after so many? tickets are issued or there seems to be a, an abuse of uh, on-street parking and especially now that things seem to be going somewhat back to normal uh, and, and which I'm really surprised because there's free parking in the structures through you know the month of June that people would be parking on the street and getting tickets but um, 
I know everything's been put on halt that we're not doing uh, towing. I mean, what what's the process going forward? Yeah, so, you know, we, we stopped towing the vehicles because City Hall was closed and the ability to come and pay back fees was was limited or restricted partially. So we have not gone back towing vehicles yet. Um, it's something that we've started to talk about quite a bit over the last couple of months because we've noticed as well as yourself that there are several people who are just abusing the system. Uh, we have towed a select few that we know are severely abusing the system um, that we did still tow. Um, but we probably will be insti reinstituting that program here shortly. Um, it's just a matter of with City Hall being closed, the payment options are restricted, and that's why we haven't been. So, and it, what is the fees for after so many tickets that it increases? Is it seven? The I calendar. Think it's, I think it's after. Uh, might be fewer than that, but yeah, it, it is after. I think it's six or seven tickets. The the fee goes from I think it's ten dollars for an expired ticket to twenty, I believe, for an expired meter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And who controls those fees? Do we have any say in that, uh, advisory parking? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, Mike, do you know the last time that uh, those fees have been reviewed or increased? No, I don't. Uh, generally, that, that is uh, at the beginning of the year with all the pine schedules for the city that, that, that that's set. Uh, so uh, that discussion, if it happened probably in October, uh, could make the next uh, city agenda for increases. But that, that has not been increased in a while. Okay. I, I think it's been in, for a very long time ago it was discussed that the advisory parking committee now it's many, many years. What was that? It, you froze up on us. I can hear you. Pardon me? I can hear you. A louder, Al. Yeah, I um, uh, I I think the the parking ticket uh, amounts were discussed many many years ago um, at the advisory parking committee, um, but that's just from my recollection. Yeah, I, I, I'd almost like to see a three tier system that you know after you know six tickets it goes up to a certain fee, after after ten and after fifteen or whatever just. I mean, there, there's no excuse for someone getting that many tickets. I mean, th there's garages available, um, you know, there's other alternatives. It just seems the fees, you know, are too low after, you know, six or seven tickets. Uh, I, I know a, a ticket just for, you know, expired meters in the city of Detroit are exorbitant. So, you know, maybe it's time that we kind of come into reality because it's the same few people that are very abusive to the system. And, and I think that we need to have a little bit more uh, you know, Let struck. <laughs> Very good. Anybody else with anything? So, hearing no further comments or uh, questions, uh, let's adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.